Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Emancipated Human. I'm your host, Luis Misses, and today I have with me two really amazing people. One of them you recognize from the past, uh, one of our guests, Kendall Williams. She's here again with us today. And our other uh, guest is Jessica Tartaro. I said it right. You said it right. So uh, there's an event that's going to happen December the 6th. And we're going to try to not give it away so much, but we're going to try to uh, elucidate a lot of what's happening. The subject that we're going to talk about today is boundaries, intimacy, and sex. And we have been working on the logistics for, the, for this uh, interview for a couple of weeks. So the tension, you know, it's happening finally. So I'm really excited that it's at last taking place. You're going to really like this interview. So before we go on, I want to introduce you to uh, these beautiful ladies. So first of all, Jessica, tell us a little bit about, your, are you, about yourself. Who are you? And what makes you passionate about doing what you do? Wow, that is a great opener. Um, okay, yeah. my name is Dr. Jessica Tartaro. I work as a clinical psychologist and an intimacy coach here in Dallas. Oh, I'm looking right at this camera, but I suppose that's the way to do it. Um, and I have had the great pleasure of collaborating with Kendall. Um, I moved here at the very beginning of this year, but she and I knew each other from previous work when I used to live in Austin. And I work with individuals and couples and really help them have the connection they want in life. And it all stems from my own journey of three years ago finding a practice called orgasmic meditation or OM for short which is a partnered meditation practice that helps people um, feel uh, fed that there's this desire that we all have a hunger even to be seen and connect and be known and I had that we all have it I still have it but through this practice what I'm learning is uh, I, I can meet that hunger and I can uh, nourish that place and I can practice and I feel very fortunate that I teach um, a practice that is also my own that is the one that helps me to be open and um, uh, really brave in scary places intimacy is scary so I have the honor of getting to teach people what I practice and I would say that's what makes me passionate that's really exciting and we're gonna explore more on that here in a little bit <laughs> you've been here before <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself and what what turns you on what why do you do this too well, I'm Kendall Williams I am a relationship intimacy um, sex coach I also teach Tantra but really what turns me on you don't want to know that no. <laughs> <laughs> um, what really makes me passionate about very similar to Jessica is my own past um, my own healing process um, it's it's amazing when when you finally wake up to the issues that you're having in life and that the core root of them can actually go back to your sexuality, you start to go, oh my gosh, here it is. It's uh, all my troubles, all these worries, all these blockages actually can be released in a pleasurable way instead of through, you know, boring chemicals induced into the body or laying on a table and getting things cut out of you or mm -hmm. years and years of different practices you know the very traditional go constantly to a therapist and not really get anywhere in the long run um, I, I learned how the body mind spirit connection really tra can transform the healing process and that is what I end up teaching people over and over again is the practice of how to connect, bring the mind into the body, be very body present and connect the spirit to that and how the spirit and the body and mind all interplay with relationship, with intimacy, with sex, how you can go from what I always say, you know, we all want that gourmet sex. We want that gourmet relationship and what we have is fast food. And the practice uh, really does come down to our topics of knowing boundaries, being good with your boundaries, and how that can deepen your intimacy, and of course how that can expand your sexuality and just your sex life in general. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you both for being uh, here today. I am uh, really keen on definitions. I think that that's one of the uh, really um, sure and concrete ways to be able to connect with people, you know, whenever you have a pool of shared meaning. So on that, you know, boundaries. A lot of people may think that boundaries are, you know, you set your boundaries to keep some people away, but they can also work to use your internal um, 
frame of reference. And would you like to explain any of you to, uh, to us about boundaries and why they're important in this kind of work? You have that beautiful quote <laughs> on boundaries that you just sent me. Oh your boy. Yeah, I know well, you probably don't know it off the top of your head, but I know that you can yeah, give I'll a picture. Give it a go. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny because I was just saying today, we often think about boundaries, as you said, as the thing that um, uh, separates or disconnects us. But I tell you, there is nothing sexier than um, finding your edge and connecting at that place. Blurry boundaries are not that sexy. You know what I mean? I don't want you to be me. I, I, I want to know what you want. It's an opportunity to really grow and play with sensation to find out if there's something that we want that's different. And we shy away from those places very often because we don't know how to navigate or negotiate it. We don't know how to put words to it. So one of the things I really teach my clients and uh, my students is how to connect uh, the body to the language center. It's tricky, you know? Very, very often in high sensation, we can't talk, you know? I know what I want. I wish he'd just move his finger to the left, but I can't say it. Or I really, really like her, but I, I can't possibly get up the courage to say hi. So um, I, I, I think about boundaries as the thing that, um, in a contradictory manner, once we have the courage and, and really the skill set, it's really a tool uh, to set them. It's the thing that actually makes it possible for us to be connected. That's pretty cool. Anything you'd like to add on that? She's definitely nailed it, of course, but um, yeah, no, I really can't add anything to that. <laughs> on that it's, one, it's I can ask a little something because, you know, there's, it seems like a lot of us don't give ourselves permission to get what we want and not just, you know, to ask for what we want and get it. Mm. Wh why? What is this... Uh, the block that allows us to, or inhibits us from getting the things that we want. We have shamed our desire. That's is what is exactly what we've done. I just, I just wrote an article last week on that very topic of shaming desire and how that holds us back. And you know, we're programmed, especially as women. I, I was having the realization that you know we have really been programmed to sit a certain way, to dress a certain way, to speak a certain way, to to shut down our sexuality because we need to be good girls. We need to be good boys. Because if we, you know, God forbid, crave something, want somebody, have this desire, want more in bed, want, want more fulfillment, even just want sex because it's been three years and we haven't experienced it, you know, we're starving to death in that way. The programs that a lot of society has been taught is that only, you know, a slut would do that. Only a whore would do that. Only this type of person. And we have these these stereotypes of what these this is like or this is what the personality is going to be like. So basically, if you have disrespect for yourself, then you have desire. Desire is this not, you know, it, it really is the, the apple that you took kind of thing. But it, what true desire does is it enlightens us, it liberates us, it frees us. Mm -hmm. And it's what, when you really get to know your boundaries, you, your desire expands. You can't help but want more. You can't help but want to push. And you know, in racing terms, I always refer to that, it's called the raggedy edge in racing terms. It's right out there where your heart is going and you're like, <sighs> but you're still in safe grounds. Mm -hmm. And you know, David Dito would talk about just leaning over the edge. You're not jumping off the cliff. You're just leaning over so that you feel that little bit of whew, excitement. And that's where you discover where your true boundaries are. Mm -hmm. You go and you find out, can I handle this or can I not? Is it a turn on or is it a turn off? And that's where you get really right with your yeses and your noes, no matter what they are, no matter who they're with. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I think that's one of the very main points of why a lot of people don't get what they want is because they don't even know. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's possible. They don't know what they like, what they can have. So one of the uh, very important things that I like to emphasize here in Emancipated Human is practical examples. Mm -hmm. People that are doing it and how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of us, uh, we don't know what we don't know. And by 
you ladies explaining these kinds of things to our viewers, they allow them um, they, they, they allow themselves to learn these things and be able to experience that. So what we basically want is to help them emancipate themselves, to help them grow, because there's only two ways. You either grow or you die. There's no other soup. That's all there is. So the work that you do is really important. Anything else that you would like to tell us on boundaries? Because this is like a subject that we could talk about for two hours. Anything you'd like to add on this one? You know, I was just thinking about what you said. We can't pursue what we don't know we want. Um, I, I think you're so right on that. I'm really enjoying uh, your reflections. I think some of what Kendall and I both do is give someone permission to ask themselves the question. When someone comes in for a consultation, um, they may be interested in my services, I sit them down, I say, what do you want? It's the hardest thing in the world. The thing they can say is what they don't want. The thing they can say is what's not working. It's the way that uh, our mind can tend to be wired, is we can find the thing that's the problem. But to find the thing that actually is the desire, is the dream, is the vision, it, it's a wonderful opportunity to pull people past, as Kendall said, that raggedy edge, that place where they allow themselves to hope and to dream. And I have this great opportunity to give them permission to do that. You know, in many cases, I'm just paying attention to a part of them that they don't pay attention to until they learn to pay attention to that. And then I say, you're set. You know what I mean? If you're paying attention, that desire will be your compass. You're, you're on the road, you know? I do an exercise in one of my classes that goes like this. Partner one says, what do you want? Partner two says, I want a foot rub. Partner one says, you can have it. And then again, what do you want? I want a latte with cinnamon. Partner one, you can have it. What do you want? I want a fulfilling relationship where someone supports me in every aspect of my life. You can have it. What do you want? And we go back and forth. It's a minute and a half exercise. People have breakthroughs. It's just the opportunity to state it and say it and, and be heard. So I, I think you're absolutely right. There's something so powerful and so simple about just asking yourself, what do I want? Exactly. I think. Uh Mm, you know, as a, I work with plants, I'm, I'm also a shaman, so 99% of the people that I get to help deal with childhood problems. So that's why I'm so adamant and, and, and so pro-peaceful parenting. One of the, um, it's really common that when we're children, you know, a lot of times they say no to us or because, you know, times are hard or whatever reason, maybe abuse from the parents, what have you. And a lot of people continue with that mental model through their adult life. You know, I'm not allowed to have this. So they hear the voice of their parents or the grandma or whomever. So it's really important to step out and say, what do I really want? And yeah, it's okay to say, I don't know, but for how long, right? Give yourself the permission to want. And, and that's also another thing that you guys were talking about. Um, I. One of my teachers, history teacher, I was 16 years old and, uh, you know, they invited me to her birthday party and like a bunch of, you know, older guys, older when I was 16, um, you know, they were drinking and partying and dancing and she said, you know what, Luis, us adults are not really any different than you guys. We're just kind of winging it. We really don't know what we're doing. So the whole deal of it is just children with experience. And this woman had some like amazing childlike energy always traveling to the different place that she didn't know and like that allowed me gave me permission to think and create stuff in my mind that I that I could do so do you have uh, who inspired you to do this I mean somebody opened your eyes to this where does this come from for me it, it really came from childhood I mean my path started early on a spiritual path and then in my teen years, when sex did come into the picture, Tantra came in with my first sexual partner. He brought it to me. <laughs> so I was a very, I don't know, I, I don't know where he got the information from, you know, we're still fantastic best friends today. But I, so I, I can definitely say 
these sorts of when once you open up to intimacy with somebody it definitely becomes almost a lifelong connection that you can gain with a lot of people and it doesn't necessarily mean the intimacy like sexual intimacy either intimacy falls into yes for my particular situation with this person it started out as a friendship it went to a sexual relationship and then it merged into another friendship and now we have children that are best friends okay. so you know, it's now becoming a generational intimacy almost. Started bit just because he introduced Tantra to hmm. a 16 year old girl. <laughs> um, that was such an eye opener to me though, just our connection. It, I once, back to David Dita, of course I, I quote him a lot. He has a reference um, where he talks about a woman when she is loved to a certain degree, she will always rate every love experience from there on to that one until somebody can love her deeper. So I spent my entire adult time searching for a love that could take me deeper than the one that I had experienced at 16. Not fully understanding that what we had was this spiritual connection that came through our sexing, through our lovemaking, that was not just friction sex. Um, so I went through a whole marriage where it was more friction based, where it was more surface based. And even though we loved each other deeply, we couldn't ever, he could never penetrate me to the level that my previous boyfriend had penetrated me at. And that drove me crazy. It made me, my, my sexual, emotional, spiritual bank account just kind of dried up. It went into the red. And I was hungering for anything. And of course, if his name ever popped up, it was just like, well, I want, I want him. And it took me a divorce and actually going back and exploring that relationship to realize it's not him. I'm looking for the intimacy. I'm looking for that depth. I want to be penetrated so deeply that I can, you know, that this is, this just goes through me. It's not about the sexing, it's not about this. It's, it's, I want just something more. And then I met my teacher and he really opened it up for me. He started to remove blockages in my body. He t brought back some of the tantric practices that I really you know, had forgotten about. And he gave them names, labels, right? Here we are humans, we need labels. We talked about that last time. <laughs> so I had now labels for these things. I'm like, oh, so that's what that is, and that's what that is. And I went and explored that, and still, here I was at that point in time, dating like seven men at one time. Yes, having sex with all of them, too, not all at the same time. But I was still, I was searching for this person that could penetrate me to this level or past what I had experienced. And I finally met a man who, without any sex, penetrated me to that level. And he really was like that healing agent that just made me go, oh my God, it's possible, it's here, this is, this is incredible. And he didn't have a clue about Tantra. He just was present enough with me and so focused and his heart so open and very childish in his energy that it awoke everything inside of me and that was like my big turning point in my life right there was just probably five years ago when that happened and even though I was on this path of helping other people and and working with people it was still not inside that that just that level that I was looking for of fulfillment and once he literally it was like a circumcisation of the heart you know this way like a, a shedding of everything old and a birthing of something new mm -hmm. and that right there just went poof, my world exploded and with it just came so much goodness afterwards I mean everybody that I've pulled into my life since then I can legitimately say I think it's because he penetrated me so deeply mm -hmm. and it was just it was that powerful to me Yes. And now it's, you know, anybody that I've been with since then and my current partner, there's this standard where that's just where I'm at. And if you're not there, then I, why, why should I go into this place if I'm not going to be able to be open enough, have my boundaries respected, be able to test different waters, explore, expand, and feel that coming back to me from my partner, whoever that person is. That's pretty powerful. Woohoo! Yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. 
I mean, one thing about this panel coming up is that we're having a you know, two-hour event, but each of us on the panel has really spent a lifetime. I mean, mm -hmm. from that story, you can clearly hear um, a lifetime of being able to be who we are and be able to offer what we're offering and do all of the shedding and rebirthing and kind of dying and starting all over again. Um, so much of the programming we get about connection, um, we got to do a lot of like breaking down and breaking through. Uh, to find the alternative. So, um, really, you can't come to this work unless you, you do that. Um, you know, that kind of, like, uh, dying and being reborn, I would say it the same way. Um, my, I, I've had a number of teachers. I've also studied a lot of spiritual paths. I researched spirituality and health in graduate school, so that's been a, a real common thread for me. I studied to be a yoga teacher and went to India. And, but I would say that... Um, the thing that brought all of that together was uh, three years ago, as I referenced earlier, when I found the practice of orgasmic meditation, and the founder of that work is also my teacher, um, Nicole Daydone. Um, it's funny because we're, we're in touch. Uh, she's the author of Slow Sex, and, and she started um, the OM movement, and I was just posting on my Facebook page uh, yesterday, and that she likes some of my photos. You know, we just have this, like, you know, um, like, attention on each other uh, even though I'm no longer actively studying with her um, and it felt so good you know because I I, uh, I guess we were both talking about this earlier but there's this or you said it actually these are we're showing up as models um, you know we learn by modeling it's a very basic psych psychological principle we model after our parents because they're the most you know obvious models in our lives and then we look for other models you know rock stars and our teachers and you know maybe the neighbor down the road and then we show up as these models of yet another thing that's that's possible. Well, Nicole really has been that for me, um, and and she talks a lot about it. She's permission. She's permission for that desire to come out. She's permission for a woman to sit a certain way and speak about very specific things. And she's permission for women to be powerful. And she's powerful, like whoa, you know. She's a fierce lady, and and she's really helped me find the thing in me that is uh, fierce and loving and has some important work to do. And then it's so funny. You know, I, I, I think that the ultimate work of the student um, is to um, then reject the teacher, you know? I wouldn't say I've rejected her, but I had to become my own teacher in order to uh, share the gifts um, that she's offered me. So, you know, there's a lot that I hold and a lot of people that I'm now working with, and um, I'm offering to them something that definitely has come through her, uh, through me, and so um, I would definitely cite her as one of the major, major inspirations for what I'm doing now. Thank you, and I'm sure she'll be watching this too. I hope so. <laughs> so, intimacy, and this is funny because the movie Love Guru, you guys probably have seen it, you know, he talks about intimacy is, a lot of people fear it because it's into me I see, so like you see inwards, and it's sometimes kind of scary. Um, What's it work with intimacy? I mean, it's not just purely about sex, like we were talking about. I mean, we have intimacy with, I don't want to say a lot of people, but like with your circle, your close circle, you have a lot of intimacy. And it could be, you know, friends or family, and you're sharing. It's the opening and the connection. And I think that's a secret word. That's what everybody wants, connection. So where does this fit in, the work? I think it is the work. <laughs> It's not fitting in, it, it, it just, it encompasses everything without, you know, like Jessica and I have a certain intimacy, a certain connection, you and I have a certain intimacy and a certain connection just from, from our meetings, from our conversations, because we're, we're coming to each other with a certain understanding that we have to be open, we have to trust, we have to risk in order to open up these doorways to have these possibilities because in our shutting down and our restriction that's where we go no no i don't want your connection you're not worth it i'm not worth it this risk is not worth it and when we have that fear come in and we let that fear which really is a paper dragon just coming at us and we go oh that's so scary that's where we the disconnect really happens and it, it's it happens in every aspect of our lives because I mean as a mother I've you know I've worked with I've had so many children come through my house my kids as friends and I have these kids come in and they tell me well I can't talk to my mom like I can talk to you or 
um, they find out that their mother lied to them about uh, this one girl, her mom lied to her about being married before. She wanted her to believe that her father was the only man she had ever been with. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until she was 15, 16 years old when she was in her mom's closet, she finds a wedding ring and she's like, well, where's this coming from? You know, that right there, that's an intimacy break. That is a, why can't you tell your daughter that I'm a woman, I've lived a life, this is it. Why not be proud of the life that you've lived, all the good, all the bad. Your scars should be something that you should be proud of, not something that you should be covering up and hiding. They're, they're wounds of growth. They're not wounds of failure. And so that intimacy start is with our parents, it's with our siblings, it's with our children, it's with our coworkers, our friends. And most definitely with our, our partners, our husbands, our wives, our lovers, our boyfriends, have whatever term you want to say there. But that depth, it all requires risk, no matter who you're dealing with. And it really, it comes back to the raggedy edge of being able to go out there and go, this is some scary ground, I can't believe I'm having this conversation with this person, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's really I, what I run into over and over again with, with my clients is them, you know, saying, well, I feel like I can talk to you. Why? I'm just providing space. I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. I'm providing space. I'm opening that doorway. I'm holding a certain container for them that they can just go, here it is. Here I am. Take me or leave me. I think I'm going to be okay in this process. You're not going to, you know, smack me for saying something wrong. It where they turn around and they go out into the world and with their partners indeed or with you know their colleagues at work they feel like they have to constantly put on a face there is this facade that we all walk around with nobody's really truly being their authentic self and when you do run into an authentic person you go whoa what is you know what's that person eating what, what, where did they just come back from? What's going on with them? Because there's a certain confidence, there's a certain fierceness, and I love the way you said fierceness and gentleness, I think you said at the same time. And those are two words that, you know, we think fierce and we think, oh, that's kind of, you know, the cat, cat, cat kind of comes out and everything. Fierceness is just the confidence of self, of being authentically you. And there is that gentleness that comes in with that because you're not so focused on everybody else. And you're not focused on yourself either. You just are living life. And that acceptance gives you fierceness, gives you gentleness, gives you compassion, gives you inner peace, gives you unconditional love. And with it all comes intimacy. Because as you come through those levels, your intimacy level expands for the world, not just for this person or that person. You can just walk in and it kind of just is there. And I think that's what we're all craving is that connection, that depth of, of intimacy with even a pop, you know, a possible stranger. Yeah, and I, I think it's just uh, exactly what you said is giving ourselves permission to be who we are. Because, you know, it's kind of fake to, like, put that mask on. And, you know, sometimes we wear it for so long that we, when we take it off, part of your skin comes with it. Mm. So it's, like, painful mm. to be wearing it perpetually mm -hmm. so giving ourselves permission to be who we are and surrounding ourselves with people with enough emotional intelligence that would be able to handle that kind of situation like not just always with a happy face because I mean life is such that you're not always going to be like that so how about you what, what do you what do you think of this one um, I mean Kendall covered it so well I think the only thing I would add is just um, uh, she talked about how to ha having intimacy with people in all areas of our lives. Um, you know, imagine if we really are integrated. If I'm not one way with my clients and one way with my nieces and one way with my boyfriend, um, but I'm responsive to the moment and coming from the same authentic core. I mean, I, I was uh, telling someone earlier today that when I first started this work, 
Um, I was a PhD psychologist and I worked for the government and people called me doctor, you know, and I was good at what I did. Um, but I was definitely one way at work and then one way at home. But I think the truth is that I had so wired into myself that I needed to shift in every part of my life that I didn't have a stable base. So when I first started this work, people would say to me, um, we can't feel you. And I'd be like, what do you mean? I'm right here. What do you mean you can't feel me? But can't feel me as in I wasn't transmitting something that was trustworthy from inside here. That my experience in here was kind of inaccessible to people. And what I learned, and it was a, a hard road, was that it was also inaccessible to me. Because every time we distance ourselves from someone else, guess what? We're also distancing ourselves from ourselves. So, you know, a lot of the work that we both do is how, we, how do we heighten sensation? How do we have a way of being and a way of connecting that will help us feel more? Well, at the end of the day, that way is to actually be true in here and then to translate this thing that's alive and living in here that we know so well because, you know, we're swimming in this ocean here of the self and let so and preserve it intact in the way that we communicate on the outside. And let me just tell you, like, sometimes um, being very intellectual is a great service in life, but sometimes it makes it very hard to undo that editing, you know? Because there's this really strong uh, uh, editor, you know, c like, series of doors and, and scissors and, you know, polishing paint um, that had, in my case, I've spent a lot of years um, uh, perfecting that, you know? I was a real intense kid and, and very hyper-focused on being good <laughs> for a long time. So it took me a, a while, you know, that was deep programming to um, soften that and to make it okay for me to just ask, how do I really feel? You know, I, I don't actually like everyone. You know what I mean? Like, wow, I'm really not always nice. Like, what a liberation to realize that. I have an awful temper. Like, let me just be real. You know what I mean? I have a lot of people believing otherwise. It wasn't true. I just really didn't know how to be myself. So um, it's like, can I be have intimacy with the store clerk, you know? I mean, whatever that looks like, but make my words real. Have life, have presence in my words. Hey, how's your night been so far, you know? It's like a real question to really put attention. It's kind of a fun game, you know? People don't know what to make of it. Um, and then something alive can show up where there's been something that's kind of numb. That's pretty cool. And, you know, being present, being aware, and living a, a very authentic life is kind of, um, you know, being at the Scordian also, uh, it's like throwing the, the Scordian apple. It, sh it shakes people and makes them think and makes them wonder and makes them maybe momentarily be a little bit uncomfortable. But it ignites something in them. So that's pretty cool too. Going back to modeling and going back to speaking from example, you know, just living a life that is so powerful that you awaken people just by being with them. Yeah. It's not necessarily what you tell them but what they see you doing and the way they see you interacting so you know we model again from parents or whomever raised us and then we a lot of times are in autopilot until we change it to this authentic living so that's that's another powerful experience um, which is pretty exciting so from this you know we went boundaries intimacy and sex the S word Friction versus gourmet. Who wants to explain that to me? As those terms come from this woman, <laughs> I'm going to defer to her. Uh, friction versus gourmet. Who doesn't want gourmet? You know, would would you rather drive through McDonald's drive-thru, or for anybody who's familiar with Seasons 52, since it's one of my favorite restaurants? Or would you rather go to Seasons 52 and have some really great Eastern sea scallops, you know, with the vegetables perfectly cooked and the best risotto that you've had for a long time and, you know, this wonderful wine to go with it and then the perfect amount of, I don't know, cheesecake or whatever that's served. You can have this or you can go over here and you can, under, what, 30 seconds, minute, something like that, whatever their clock says that they have to have it out in, you can have this, you know, double cheeseburger, french fries, and a Coke or whatever the heck they serve. And, you know, and this, if you don't eat it, you can actually put it in your purse and carry it around for like four or five years and it's going to come out looking <laughs> exactly the same as what it did when you put it there. But 
this fruit over here, it, it fills you, you're savoring it. You actually might pay attention to the person that you're sitting across the table from and you're enjoying them equally because it's now an experiential event of savoring everything. You're not just cramming it in your mouth to try to fill a void that 30 minutes later, you now go, oh, something's not right. Now I'm just not feeling right, I have a headache, I just, 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 all these different side effects happen. That same event is what happens in the bedroom. It happens in our sex lives. We either have that fast food, that friction base, or we have something that penetrates us deeper, that fulfills us deeper, that expands our whole being where we're actually connecting, experiencing intimacy with our partner. And to me, that's just, I mean, that's just the, the quickest base, you know, definition of the two. A lot of it, it, I think a lot of the times we think of sex being something that you can just, it's a release. It's something that we do for, you know, oh, I've had a stressful day. So, you know, a lot of the times in, in my workshops, I, I have a, a quote or something that we share a lot where I talk about um, don't, don't use her pussy as, um, as a, what's the name of the, the drug that keeps you balanced? The Prozac. Oh, Prozac. Yeah, don't use mm -hmm. her pussy as your Prozac. Mm -hmm. And that really comes down to that event that happens a lot in relationships where it's been a stressful day. The boss has been yelling at you. This has happened. The kids did this, that, that. Neither one of you really feel like it, but you need to release that stress. So you just go, <laughs> Pump, pump, uku, you're done. Go to sleep. <laughs> Was there any connection? No. Do you wake up the next morning kind of going, eh, with your partner? I spent a marriage where it, towards the back end, I would wake up after sex the next morning so freaking mad at my husband yeah. that I wanted to strangle him. And I hadn't even gotten out of bed and gotten my cup of coffee yet. And I just wanted to roll over and start beating him. We talk about we could probably have fun with the whole, you know, temper thing because I have a temper and a half. And I would, I, I, I'm that building volcano person if I let it be. And that's what would happen to me is that we would go through these cycles and I was questioning myself towards the end of the relationship. Why is it that we have intimacy? <laughs> At that time, what I thought was intimacy. <laughs> we have intimacy. We make love. And then I'm mad. Mm. I'm mad. I'm hurting. I'm I'm experiencing physical pain. I'm experiencing hormonal fluxes like no other. I, you know, all of this different stuff. I it didn't seem right to me. And through everything else that I learned, you know, after that, now I look at it. I'm going. I have all these stresses still. I have all this sort of stuff. But now my life, I I'm pretty like this. Yes, I have my ups and downs, everybody does, you know, feelings, emotions, they all play a role, but they don't take hold of me where I literally want to go and take my dining room table out in the backyard and burn it. Yes, I did that. <laughs> 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 but it's more just, okay, this is something that I need to process, step back, witness, breathe, come at it from a different viewpoint. And when I look at in the sex aspect of it, it's because we're not using each other for these stress releases. We're, it's not always a three hour event like Tantra teaches you, but it is always a connective safe space for both of us. And that is where that depth comes in. And we're constantly communicating intimacy and sexual connection throughout our day. There's never a day that doesn't go by where we connect probably five or six times minimum. Where we're, it's, maybe it's a text, maybe it's a touch. Maybe it's just a, you know, that consciousness of asking a present question and being there, creating that intimacy, and then waiting and giving your partner that chance to respond instead of that turn away. No, I don't have time for you. Because every time we have those turnaways in the relationships, we feel a break in our intimacy. We feel a disconnect. And that comes right back into the bedroom or wherever you're having sex at, right? It just comes back to, well, I disconnected from you here. I disconnected from you there. I'm going to disconnect from you here too. And that fast food friction sex really is where two people become 
pieces of meat and they're just using each other and it's not the the gourmet is the fulfilling the satisfying whether it is a 20 minute love making session or a four hour love making session that does not matter you don't have to set up a whole room and do all the candles and everything sometimes it's good to just you know play on the couch in the broad daylight <laughs> it's but it's it can be as short or as long. It's about that connection, that sacred space that you hold within that you also expand without to your partner. And that's what makes it gourmet or not. It's not so much technique or position or, you know, any of that stuff. You can have all the techniques in the world. If you're not connecting at a different level, they're not going to save your ass. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I think that, that what you just said kind of reminded me of what you said of being the PhD. You know, we're like up in our heads, relatively to the left side of the brain. And it's just, you know, our, our body just carries our brain around, basically. So, like, I like what you said. It's not necessarily a four-hour thing. It could be 20 minutes. But the connection throughout the day, I think that's what's pretty important. You know, I have memories of, you know, my... My parents always, you know, calling each other, checking on each other, mm. how you doing, you know, three o'clock, your dad calls, so we need to get home. Mm. And, you know, those things uh, keep in your mind and uh, you replicate them and stuff. So I, I like a lot what you said that was um, really powerful. Um, how about you? What, what do you, what, I mean, where does this fit in your uh, practice and your daily life? There's very little that I can add that really wasn't already said. I mean, I think she nailed it. It's it's really, truly the connection. Like, very, very often sex happens in the dark, when we're half awake, in the middle of the night, or right before we go to bed, but we're really tired, you know what I mean? And um, one of the adages we say with orgasmic meditation is it's sexuality in a well-lit space. So I started having sex with the lights on, you know, like imagine, um, you know, what about eye contact while we're connected, you know, our bodies are connected. What would it be if we also connected the rest of us, you know? And then there's this extraordinary capacity um, to ride something that we're not steering, like you were saying, we're not just, um, having sex to achieve something, release something, achieve some particular feeling or take away some particular feeling, but to plug into something bigger and uh, and, and then surrender. I like what what about sex and surrender? Um, it's a powerful combination. So um, yeah, I mean, you, you said it beautifully. it's it's really that piece where we open our eyes and let them see all of our, you know, humanness you know like here's my body it's you're not gonna be fantasizing and I'm not gonna be fantasizing about some other body it's this one in this moment you know at this time feeling these feelings and then if I don't feel a certain way that I think I should be feeling the hottest thing to say is can you slow down you know I need a different stroke whatever that is you know I need something different it's the hottest thing in the world because here's the thing like if we disconnect and we go into our heads, they feel it. Like, you know, unfortunately in most cases there's no words for it, but suddenly the sensation dies, or suddenly he goes into his head and he's going, what's she thinking? And I'm going, what's he thinking? And no one is saying anything, you know, and we're still having sex and it's like awful, um, you know, and we've all been there. So, um, you know, the sexy thing is to say, I think I need you to just hold me right now, or um, oh, I really want this thing that's like kind of more than I've ever asked for, but I really want it. Um, you know, whatever direction. It's the honest thing, you know, like honest is sexy. I do think that one of the sexiest things is, um, I, I mean, I like women, uh, a woman that knows what she wants. And, you know, lights on, powerful, you know, just knowing what you want. That, that alone is just, uh, you know, more than you could ever ask for because it, it's not just, um, it's not just for, like you said, just Prozac kind of stuff. I want to be able to have that connection and to know that it's feeling for you as much as it's feeling for me, that we both are getting uh, really connected and really a lot of pleasure and, and basically just 
And you know, uh, beyond the body, just like that soul connection that's mm -hmm. happening, what you were talking about, that level that is so high that, I mean, it, it does not happen if you don't know yourself. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really excited about what you guys were talking about. And then now switching uh, subjects. Actually, can I add one piece? Yes, please. Like, I would just word it slightly differently. Instead Tell of me. beyond the body, fully inhabiting the body. Like, golly, I'm a fan of the body. People know me know that. I'm a fan of the body. My boyfriend said to me today, tell me what you like about me. And I just started describing his body. And he was like, what do you like about my personality? <laughs> you know, I was like, well, there's that too. Um, you know, and I joke. But I, uh, there's an extraordinary reverence that I have for uh, just being present, truly present in our bodies. So it, it's not transcending the body. It's actually fully drop. You know, it's like we have all these spiritual traditions that are about transcendence, like elevating up. Or So this is about actually descending, fully descending into the body. Being present. Yeah. You said it perfect. I love that. I agree 100%. We, we actually talked about that a little bit in our first conversation that we're going to have the link for it down below as well. Um, what's happening on December the 6th? December the 6th, well, Jessica and myself and a co-teacher of uh, that's a friend of ours also, Kathy, we are coming together to address these topics. Um, it's going to be a beautiful luncheon event where it's just going to be this raw dialogue between the three of us, sharing our stories, answering questions, touching on the importance of each one of these parts that, that we've you know, touched on today, giving some details as to how um, individ the individuals that are there um, can really you know, take it to the next step, to that next level. How can I you know, learn about saying yes, saying no, what my boundaries are, what, what, what are the procedures <laughs> kind of to getting familiar with your boundaries. Um, learning about different techniques. I, I know that both Jessica and I have different things that we do in our practices. Like she shared one of her examples of, of going back and forth, what do you want, you know, and, and this. I have some similar things that I do with, with clients. Um, I'm sure that we're both going to be sharing this. Kathy has some incredible stuff that she does because she's part of the whole cuddle party movement with Reed Mahalko. Um, so she shares, you know, how to release shame, the importance of permissions, the importance of boundaries is her, a big, big topic for her. Um, and really getting in, for all of us, we're going to be talking about that intimacy, the connection. And then there will be the play, of course, on sex there because in boundaries and intimacy, sex is a natural you know, byproduct of it, and our sexuality does come about in every aspect of our lives. I know I, when you and I talked before, I brought up, you know, it even plays a role in our financial picture. It does, and I'm referring to that when you are fully embodied and giving yourself permission to have desire and to, you know, test your boundaries and to say yes and to say no and to open up you're also calling in this abundance from the universe for every aspect mm. of your life because it makes you a true creator, a true manifester, whatever term you want to use there, that you're going to harvest a lot more when you are living authentically and from your core and letting all that creative energy, which is sexual energy, you know, unfold and, and just kind of go out and waves out into the world. It makes your work life better, it makes your creative life better, it makes your intimate life better. So they all do you know weave together and you you can't really have a gourmet version of any of it without it being gourmet on all of it mm. so there's no you know getting your your big mac and then having your incredible risotto over here and a glass of wine they just don't mix nope <laughs> they don't i agree and details for this event are going to be posted down below on the uh section uh, below uh, what is it? the description section that's what it is um thank you so much for being here today actually thank you for having me here today because you know somebody let us borrow the space so i'm really grateful for it um any last comments that you guys want to share um i just want to say how excited i am that we're doing this in dallas it's, it is an honor to join with Kendall, who's been doing this for quite some time. It's an honor to get to know Kathy better. And I think the piece that I'm really excited about about the panel is to find out who's out here. 
um, in this big city with a, a lot of sparkle and a lot of these hidden pockets, um, you know, who also is interested in having um, fine wine and risotto um, in their intimacy? And so I'm, I'm really excited for, for those people who are going to come, and we do have a limited number of tickets. So, you know, we do recommend your listeners to um, buy their tickets in advance so that you can get your spot at the table. There's lunch included. We're going to have the panel and Q&A and then a, a fun raffle where you can enter to um, win a bunch of prizes, including free sessions with all of us, um, some time Lots to... Lots of cool sexy toys. Too. And some <laughs> accoutrements as well. Um, so, I, so I'm really excited for, you know, the, the community people that will show up, um, and we hope that will be you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Remember December 6th, and we're going to post the links down below so you can purchase your tickets in advance. Um, check them out there on Facebook as well, and we're going to have their links there too. Once again, this is your host, Luis Fernando Misses for Emancipated Humans. Subscribe to our channel and give us a like and maybe a share if you really liked it. Thank you, and uh, once more, peace, love, and anarchy.